My name's Ed Frawley. I'm doing this video today because our friend, Michael Ellis, called me and Cindy a couple weeks ago and asked us if we would sign a petition to stop people in the San Francisco area and in New York from trying to get legislation passed to prohibit the use of remote collars in dog training. And we absolutely said we would do it. We 100% agree with Michael and all of the uh, professional dog trainers that we know that will tell you no. Don't ever ban remote collars. I'm 75 years old. And, and I'll say this. If you agree with me, go to the web address that I've included with this video, sign it, and be done with it. If you want to hear why I feel so strongly about this issue, then continue watching. Because Cindy says sometimes I go on a little too long. But I have some things to say here. One of them is, I'm 75 years old. I've been training dogs for well over 60 years. I was training dogs before there ever were remote collars. And I remember what it was like back then. And it was ugly at times. And it can still be ugly today. I'm not here to tell you that remote collars can't be abused. They're a tool. You can abuse any tool. You can abuse a metal choke chain. You can, re you can abuse a, a nylon slip collar. You can abuse a prong collar. You can abuse a rope around a dog's neck that's being used as a leash. I don't care what it is. You can abuse a lot of things. You, should we outlaw cars because some fools get drunk driving cars and kill people? There's a lot of things that can be used incorrectly that have bad consequences. But I'm here to tell you that if the people like myself or other professional dog trainers learn how to use a remote collar, it's hands down the best dog training tool that's ever been developed, ever. I remember getting my first remote collar. It was a Tritronics Pro 100 in the late 70s, paid a thousand bucks for it. I didn't like it at all. It only had five levels of stimulation. I used it for a little while and I put it away. I didn't touch a remote collar probably through most of the 1980s. And when these collars started to evolve that are here today, where we have like a dog truck collar that's got 127 levels of stimulation and a human can't feel it until it's at level 21, 20. Uh, and I'm training a lot of my dogs that have had the foundation done on the collar and they react to levels below 21. You can't tell me that's inhumane to use that training tool on a dog. You know, for 35 years, I bred police service dogs. I haven't bred dogs in a lot of them. All German bloodlines. Uh, we have a professional breeding facility that has no dogs in it right now. Hot water, heat in the floor, all ceramic tile, four whelping rooms, yada, yada, yada. I haven't bred dogs in 11 years. Now I have a, a Shih Tzu Rosie over here. I have a Border Terrier laying over there. I have a six-month-old Chihuahua laying over there, and I have... Uh, a two-year-old German Shepherd that lives in the house with us. Rosie and Stella have remote collars. I have never had to use stimulation on Rosie. The Shih Tzu, six pounds. She thinks, we live on 45 acres uh, here in Wisconsin. Uh, I feed dogs, or I feed uh, birds, I love birds. Deer come to my house and eat all my my bird feet every night. Drives me crazy in the wintertime. Rosie thinks that deer poop and rabbit poop are hors d'oeuvres. And when we're out, sometimes she'll get over near the, the deer poop and she'll get into it when we're on our walks. And I say, Rosie, out, or yuck. And if she refuses to do it because it's fresh, I'll just give her a little buzzer. Not stimulation, just the vibration. It's all I need with her. She has a soft temperament. It's all I need. Same thing with Stella. Stella would chase a rabbit or a squirrel till the sun comes down. 
but she's learned with a remote collar once we've established her working level, I don't have to even use it anymore. All I have to do now is say no, and I give her the vibration, and she stops. That is not abusive. That's a great tool. People are going to say, well, you can buy these collars that are just vibrating collars. Well, that's not going to solve the situation. Some dogs, Stella, uh, police service dogs, need to know there are higher levels that can stimulate a dog and tell them, no, I better not do this. So, and that brings up a good point too. I can't imagine, I was a police canine handler for 10 years, uh, for three here in Wisconsin on our local sheriff's department. For th three of those years, I was chairman of the training committee for the Wisconsin Police Dog Association. I can't imagine what police canine handlers are going to do if they don't have remote collars. A lot of police dogs are a lot of dog to handle. They have to be. We want them to be. They have to go out and fight humans. And when I was on the sheriff's department, Every time I did a call out, I took my dog's collar, I put him on him, and I wore the, remote, the receiver or the transmitter on my vest. Maybe one in 20 deployments would I ever have to touch that collar. It was always there. It was a backup. We can't take that away from law enforcement. That is absolutely crazy to even think about it. Now, I understand that a lot of the people that want to ban these collars are well-intended. A lot of the people that want to ban these collars probably have dogs like Rosie, maybe Stella, that never need to have a remote collar. Not every dog, not every dog needs a remote collar. People that have their dogs and never let them off leash, they don't need a remote collar. People that have really soft temperamented dogs like Rosie, maybe they don't need a remote collar. But there are a lot more people out there that get these little puppies and they don't teach them manners, they don't know how to manage a dog in the house, and they end up with a problem that needs to be fixed. And a remote collar is a good solution, and a leash is a good solution to that problem. So all I'm saying is, is if, if you agree with this, let's start by getting a lot of names on these petitions to stop this legislation. And people need to go to the committees when they have them in their local communities and stand up and say, hey, listen, these are really good training tools. These people that are against them, these animal rights people that are against them, they are what they are. They're uneducated dog trainers. So we ask you for your support. Sign the petition.